Good afternoon. Yeah, we're live. All right, just checking. Um, thank you for joining me and welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 759, 759. And the topic today is when you don't need a relationship is the best time for one. And that already makes sense, I think. But if it doesn't, I'll explain more about it and also give you some clues of why it's better and how you can get there if you don't feel like you're there at the moment. And the opposite of that too, I think. We'll see, these are never scripted, so let's see what happens. Before I introduce, before I jump into the topic and explain more deeply what's going on, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby. Hi, you probably already know that by now. I am a best-selling, oh, I'm doing it the right way around. I'm the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples about love and relationships. I'll put the link in the comments so you can find it out later on. I'm also an inspirational speaker, international inspirational speaker, and a, and a relationship attraction expert being a passionate champion of the divine feminine. I hope women create balance in love, life, and business because that's what really is fed by my mission and my calling. It's also what inspired these talks called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Now, some of these topics aren't just for women. So like the one today is not for women only, but it is generally towards women because they're the people I normally speak to. If you're a man, it's okay to watch this. If you're a woman, it's okay to watch this. If you're gender indifferent, that's okay to talk about this too. So, again, excuse me, I didn't finish the bridge. This is my <laughs> this is my daily chat I started over two years ago called Messages to the Masculine Inspire Your Friend and Heart. I did say that part. And today we're episode number 759. And uh, today we're talking about the idea of being unattached enough to have a relationship that works. And that's really the key of the whole thing. So... It sounds counterintuitive and backwards to say, well, when you don't need a relationship, it's the best time to have one. But the truth is, is when you need a relationship, it's the worst time to have one. The opposite is true. So let me explain that down a bit. I, if you haven't been watching my broadcast before, by the way, and in particular, if you haven't watched my broadcast this past week, I basically talked the whole week about codependency and the pain, suffering, and challenges it creates and what you can do differently so you don't have to deal with that. And this, in a way, is kind of the the expression of that and also the um, escape from that codependency paradigm because when you need a relationship when you're yearning for that, that love in your life when you're passionately desperately crying out for the love in your life is the worst time to have it because you're coming from a deep place of lack of pain of suffering and frankly who'd want to date somebody who comes from need pain and suffering would you want to date someone like that I hope not because if you do, that's inviting someone to be your, your um, patient, your recipient of care that is almost going to be draining your resources, your energy, and your love, which is not what you want. They said, I think you do. So the idea of having a healthy relationship comes from, ideally, as I talk about, a place from overflow where you're already filled up yourself. And when you're in that place when you're already filled up yourself, as I've said before, you basically learn how to love yourself, appreciate yourself, and care about yourself. When you fill up your own tanks first, you don't need anybody. And when you're in a place of not needing anybody, it's a great time to go date somebody. Because then you're in a place of abundance and overflow, which one, is a lot easier and less stressful, and two, is more attractive. So if you want to meet somebody who's going to be attracted to you, why not be in a joyful, happy, fulfilled place? And I don't mean acting, I mean really being there. This is why I talk so much about self-sufficiency and self-love and self-mastery in my courses and in my work. Because frankly, it's the best place to be, to be in a relationship. And it's gonna sound counterintuitive, I know, but it's really that simple. There are many relationships, and I've been in some of them. <laughs> I've been in some of them. That are, um, how do I say this in a nice way? Desperately needing to have someone in your life so you feel okay. I'm personally, a vic I'm personally, I'll say the victim of this, I've personally been to put myself in a role where I was needing to be with somebody and then I manifest a relationship that became very toxic. And I'm not the only one who's done this. In fact, I know many people who have because this, this, um, this paradigm, which I've, again, I've talked about this whole week about codependency and I've, I've done way more than I need to about this because you hopefully you got the point. If you haven't watched your broadcast, please watch them. These will transform your life, I hope. When you get to the point of realizing that you don't need anybody else in your life, when you get to the point where you know that who you are is enough, when you get to the point where you value yourself enough to not to just sell yourself short in a relationship, 
is when you're in the right place for one. Again, it sounds counterintuitive. I know it is, it is does sound backwards because it's like, why would you want something you don't need it? Because it's the best time to enjoy it. Codependency is founded upon, found is the right word, on the place of need, of yearning, of wanting, of having something you don't have and feeling lost without it. The idea of being in a 50-50 relationship, as I said before, and it's in my book, I talk about that as well. A 50-50 relationship is a weakened place to be because the relationships are not 50-50, they are 100-100. A relationship is 200%, actually more than that. It's, the, it's greater than the sum of the parts. So if you're a single person and you meet someone who's single, you're both 100%, especially when you live fully and you express who you are and you own your own value, that when you're in a relationship, it becomes additive. And relationships should be additive, not replacing something you think is missing. Again, I talked about all this stuff before, but I'm giving you like the, the cliff notes to remind you and to encourage you to look from the place of filling yourself up first before you go out and look for relationships and, and love and do it the right way. I hate, to, I hate to use the term the right way, but the most effective way, put it that way. So some keys, some tips, some reminders is, as I said, to fill yourself up first, to be fulfilled in who you are, to love and appreciate and value who you are to care about who you are to the extent that when you go out and meet somebody, you're willing to say no. If that person doesn't show up the same way, you're quite happy to walk away. Just simply say, you know what, I'm not interested. Not against them, but for you. Again, self-support the whole way through. I would think, and it's one of the things I've become so clear about in my coaching work, is helping my clients learn how to support themselves energetically and emotionally, and mentally too, so that they are in a place where their self-value um, has been raised so that what they choose in a relationship has to meet that or exceed that. Let me ask you a question. Would you be looking for a relationship that drags you down? I mean, the obvious answer I would presume is obvious is no. Would you want to be in a relationship that meets you at the lowest level you've been at? And some of you say, well, if they lift me up, it'd be great. Well, yeah, do you really want to go to find somebody who's going to do the work for you and make you feel better for as long as they care to? So when they stop caring about you, they drop you again back in the, in the pit. That's no fun either. I'm very clear about this, and I'm, that's why my talks have gotten so adamant the last week especially, and why this is my focus for my clients, is learning how to love yourself, to honor, respect, and appreciate yourself, to be so adamant that your self-support, your self-love, your self-appreciation, self-care, etc., comes first, makes you a much better prospect for a relationship. Frankly, from my own lessons I've been seeing, when I see people who are actually in that place, I'm getting pretty good at feeling into that vibration, like being, um, I won't say intuitive, but sensitive enough to see it. When I meet somebody who's fully in themselves, actually, oh, here we, mm, okay, excuse me. Let, me, let me change it from another angle for a second. Hmm, how do I say this? <laughs> okay, let's say it this way. I've remembered at times where I was very attracted to certain women who were very attractive, yes, which I've, I've met women who are very attractive all the time. But I've noticed that when they were mo when they're most attractive was when they were happy and joyful. And oftentimes it's when they're actually when they were in a relationship. And now I'm going against what I said earlier, so I'm gonna figure out how to tie it together. Like they were in, when they were in love, they were glowing, they were joyful, they were happy, it made them way more attractive. Their eyes were bright, they seemed very joy-filled, of course, because they were, they were getting, they were in sex and everything else. But they were in a healthy relationship. Well, I'm, excuse that, they were in a relationship, I'm sure it was healthy. But at the time, they were very happy about that. And I found them to be very attractive. Of course, that was the wrong time to date them because they're in a relationship. But what I realized is the core quality of that place they were in was so filled up with joy and love and exuberance, it made them very, very attractive. And I would say that's true for men and for women because if we honor and respect and love who we are, that vibration, that, that brightness that we own and we honor is an absolutely magnetic attraction to somebody else. But of course, if you're in a relationship, that can be a challenge. <laughs> you've got to ward off the people you're interested in. So I'm looking back and saying, hmm, that was coming from a codependent place. But as I see now, if we do that on our own, if we learn how to take care of ourselves when we're single and we fill ourselves up in such a way that we feel joy-filled, happy, and love who we are, it makes our dating prospects interesting because first of all, again, as I said, it makes you way more attractive. But secondly, and, more, and perhaps more importantly, because you now know what you're worth, your value, your joy, your deservedness for love, means that you choose at a higher level and you refuse anything below that. 
So when someone attracts you, maybe for a woman and a man attracts you and courts you, and you can feel his lack coming towards you, you just say, say no. If you're a man dating a woman and you're, t- and you're pursuing her, you notice that she comes from a place of neediness and, and almost like reaching out to you too much, you may want to say no as well. You might want to say yes, just if you feel that way. I'm not saying you should, should or shouldn't do these things. But my point about this is simple, is that when you start to learn how to be self-honoring so to a degree, you will know for sure that whoever you date has to value yourself at that level or more. And that's a good thing. So this reminder, this, this, this summary of what I said this past week, is really to remind you that you deserve the best. And it starts by you knowing how much you deserve the best from yourself. When you love yourself, when you appreciate yourself, when you support yourself energetically from your heart into the world, it transforms everything around you. This is why I've been so adamant about it this past week and beyond. This is why I promote my self-love practice because I think it's a great place to start to rebuild up that, that fuel cell, so to speak. And also why I talk so much about my Coming Home to Yourself course because it's built upon this premise. It's designed for mostly single people, especially single people, who want to learn how to love themselves more to learn how to build the different areas of self-support, and I have, I have 17 of them right now, which includes self-confidence, self-trust, self-forgiveness, self-acceptance, self-approval, self-confidence, all the different, I think it's, a, no, it's self-confidence, yeah, it's self-confidence confidence twice, excuse me on that one, but a multitude of self-support practices that help you become so self-sufficient that relationship has to be amazing for you to be in it. And isn't that what you want, an amazing relationship? This is the secret way to get there, by the way. It's to raise your standards by supporting yourself so much that any relationship you have will be amazing. And that is a powerful place to be. And you're welcome. <laughs> Always made sense. That means now I'm going to put a few things. So, so I'm going to put a few things in the comments. I will put in the comments, again, my book and the self-love practice and the coming home to yourself course. You can check them all out because I've talked about them. I want to make sure you get value from them. Um, and also, if you want to find out more about working with me, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session, a compliment, sorry, a complimentary clarity conversation, not discovery session. No discovery going on, it's clarity we're working on. So a complimentary clarity conversation, that'll be in the comments as well. So that's four things I gotta do. All right. So I hope you may got my made my point. I think I was pretty adamant and persistent and, and direct about this. So I hope this has been value to you. Um, if there has been, please let me know. I do appreciate getting feedback on this. This is Part of my mission now more than ever is to help my clients learn to love themselves so much that they get to be um, beyond the default of codependent relationships. And I think you'd like to get beyond that if you understood my talks the last week or so. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. Um, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, unless I not- notify otherwise. So if you didn't catch me today live, you can catch me another day live, no problem, on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. My replays, because I invite you to watch at least the last week's worth of replays, that's all about codependency. Those are on my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. That's my business page. Uh, my profile picture has a, blue, a picture of me in a blue shirt on it. And then also I put them on YouTube for those people who don't do much as much Facebook. If you watch it on YouTube, this is where it came from. Um, YouTube, YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. That all my social media is my name, Barry Selby. And um, I think that's it. I think I made my point. So four links in the comments, check them out. Um, reach out if you need support. If you have any questions about this topic, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. And if this has been of importance to you or somebody else, please let them know about it. Tell them, share them, hey, you want to do that, I appreciate that. Um, this is part of my ongoing mission to remind you that you deserve the best. It's my ongoing mission to teach you how to have healthy relationships. It's my ongoing mission to inspire you to love more, live more and enjoy life. If I've done that, I've succeeded. If I haven't, tell me how I can help you. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. You take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.